So how do you homeschool multiple kids together? even with a high schooler. I'm determined to get this figured out this year because last year was my son's ninth grade homeschool year and I did feel like he was a little bit more separate from us than I would have liked. Even though we did some things together, I need him with me. I only have three more years. So this year's goals is build better relationships with each other, stronger sibling bonds, and how can we incorporate my 10th grader into this year as much as possible. My name is Rachel and this is my, oh my goodness, eighth year homeschooling. I have a third grader, a seventh grader, a 10th grader this year. This year we're not doing a co-op, we're doing everything on our own because I feel like the time is short. There's family goals we've got. I've got a dog back here, as you can see. She's gonna be part of the video, I'm thinking. But I did promise her that if you like the video, for every like, she gets a belly rub. So if you appreciate the dog and you want her to get belly rubs, then make sure you give me a like. So I have a lot going on this year. I have spent a lot of time this summer prepping for the year, planning out all the different things that I want to do, figuring out how we're going to do it. So I'm first going to start with what we're going to do every single day. How we're going to start our day is we are going to do our Bible study together. I have an idea of what I would like to do with some scripture writing. Maybe he's teaching my children how to do some of their own personal devotion time. We will likely continue reviewing the Sunday school curriculum that we always do, which I've talked about in this video, John MacArthur Sunday School curriculum. But we're also gonna be doing this Faithopedia together, and I already talked in detail about this in another video also, so check that video out. But this is kind of like a history of the Bible, a history of some apologetics terms. There's missionary stories in here. I have some journals for my kids to fill out as we go along the way. So check out this video for a detailed look at this, but this is also kind of going to be the spine of what I do for history. So this is what I haven't figured out. Maybe once we get into it, I'll see how much my son will be able to dig deeper with us in this. But I went through every single week here and decided which heroes of faith we were going to study. So I have six heroes of faith here. I can't remember if I talked about these in my other video. So Corey Ten Boom, Gladys Olliward, Amy Carmichael, George Mueller, Eric Little, and Brother Andrew is who I'm gonna try to read for history this year. I also have a church history book that I was given that's got a lot of great information, kind of very easy to consume, I think, for little tidbits of information that whatever goes along with this. And then I have these pamphlets that I got. I have family who is lives in Louisville, and there's a lot of seminaries down there with some really great bookstores. So I'm pretty sure this is where I got that, is at one of those seminary, Southern Baptist Seminary bookstores. But this is a, a timeline of how we got the Bible. Lots of great information in this huge pamphlet. So I haven't really looked very deeply. This is going to be interesting though because my church just kind of did a little mini session on this this summer and like how the Bible was actually translated and why it's in Greek and why it's in Hebrew and you know why the Catholic Bible is in Latin. But wait, there's more. While I'm reading aloud because I'm I'm pretty positive my son isn't going to sit in there while I do read aloud. I guess I'll need to determine how many hours a day he needs for his high school work. I might pull him in, so we'll see. But while I'm doing the YWAM biographies, the church history biographies, my daughters listen best if their hands are busy. Well, in the past when I've done read aloud, so like if I'm doing a fiction read aloud or kind of a fun read aloud, I, I probably don't mind if they're just gonna be doing coloring or working on an art project or their handwriting. I will allow that here and there. But I was thinking, what else could they do while I'm doing this missionary story read aloud? And so... I went to the YWAM website and they had some free printables there and just so happened they had free printables for some of the books that I'm actually gonna be reading. So I printed out some of those. So like I have this crossword puzzle for George Mueller. They have a crossword puzzle for various ages. So this one is clues down here. This one is just figure out 
four letter words and five letter words. So, you know, crossword puzzles are good, especially if you have struggling spellers because it forces you to think about that. There are some coloring pages that go along with the George Mueller biography. There was a good character quality of George Mueller. So here's like another activity that has to do with George Mueller. And then I also found some websites that gave me some free maps. So I looked up like all of the biographies, where they were from, where they were missionaries. Like I noted all this in a spreadsheet, which subscribe if you wanna see how I planned our homeschool year, because I will show you all of these details that I planned out. I just can't show you everything in this video. You're gonna have to subscribe. You're gonna have to wait for that future video. That's just how it goes, but planning is a process and it can be a tedious process when you're customizing your curriculum. But anyway, once I figured out like which continent was most pertinent to that person. I went and found some free maps. So I made several copies of these maps because they can do several things with maps while I'm reading. I can give them tracing paper. They can trace the map. I bought this book, Passport to the World, probably from christianbooks.com or Amazon. I'll link it below if I can find a link. But this has a lot of different countries in it. Can't tell you which ones, but I'm pretty sure I do see England on here. So that's where George Mueller would be from. Okay, so like this is Israel. So that just gives you short little, very consumable, small tidy facts that would be easy for your children to just kind of consume right now i have this in one on the united states just sitting on my coffee table like coffee table books because i thought you know how it is when you have books laying out sometimes your kids will just flip through them or if we're sitting in the living room having a family chat and my little one gets bored she can grab the book and kind of look at it but it says like what they're what foods they eat, what their language is, and right there, a picture of their flag. So that leads me to another thing they can do. When they know where this machinery is from, they can draw the flag. I also created something for them to fill out. So this is a created resource. No, I do not have it available. I'm sorry, you guys. I've got no place to put this stuff. It's, it's just too much for me to manage for free when people send me emails and ask me to be constantly sending new attachments. So I'm sorry. If I get a website someday, I will make this all available, but right now it's not available. But I created this myself. I just added some questions that they might fill out and then I made this box down here so that they could draw the map of that country. And then also there's a map here or they could look up on another atlas. I have tons of atlas books too they could on their map that I printed, they could mark where the missionary was born. They could mark where they were located at. This whole European map, map here, they can mark all the countries. I mean, there's so much they can do while they're listening, especially map work. This really doesn't require a whole lot of intentional brain power. Like if you were say doing math while I was reading, it would be really hard for you to listen and do math at the same time. But I feel like you could do map work and listen while I was reading aloud. I created a process that I will talk about in my planning videos when I go over that. So that way, depending on what I'm doing that week, I won't have to think, okay, what worksheets do I need? What should they be doing? Like I have a whole process figured out for this. So one more thing with the maps. I bought a Draw Europe book. So I was familiar with these from Classical Conversations because there's a lot of map drawing in classical conversations. So they just teach you starting out very simple steps, what to draw the seas. Now here's how you're going to draw the Russian border. So it takes you step by step until you are able to freehand all of Europe. And then in classical conversations, and I might try this with my daughters, but in classical conversations for seventh grade, the kids get so used to drawing maps. They draw every single continent, every single country. They draw on rivers, they draw on mountains. By the end of the year, they're able to freehand the entire world, including borders of every country. So it is possible. The value of drawing maps, especially from memory, is that you learn exactly where countries are and then it, and it can help you with discussions later like why was it that Hitler invaded Poland first well there were a lot of natural barriers around Germany except for Poland that one was an easy grab first whereas 
Germany to Austria, there were some mountains, I believe, to cross. And so then I also have this Draw the Entire World book. I have old classical conversations. These are called, I think we call them tables. But so like you can quiz yourself where stuff is at on a blank map. But then there's also, it's listed here. So while my daughters are drawing certain things, they could refer to this to see what the name of a country is. I have all of those. And then I also have these table maps of the world. These are also from Classical Conversations, but good for tracing, good for just viewing. All kinds of resources when you've been homeschooling for eight years, am I right? Give me thumbs up if I'm right. So because I'm reading all of the YWAM biographies, I wanted to also make sure that I had some fun read-alouds in there. So to me, it depends on the length of the book, how quickly I can get through it. I usually try to dedicate about a half an hour every day for read-aloud. I don't know, what do you moms do for read-aloud? Do you read longer than that? I'm going to alternate a missionary story with a fun read-aloud. That's my read-aloud plan, and on to science. So science this year, we are continuing with the good and the beautiful science, but we are continuing with it very loosely. Because last year, I think I bought... I don't know how many units I bought, five or six? And we did too. So I did not buy any more. I thought, I got plenty. We're gonna continue on with what I already have. But then there's another desire that I really have to do with my daughters this year while they're still young, while I feel like I can still spark some of that wonder in them. My teenager is losing it. Oh, prayers for all the moms with teenagers. It was like overnight she went from being a little girl to this little sassy teenager who doesn't have child interests anymore. Whatever. I'm not kidding. It was like overnight. Dad, I met a man in Rome, and he's wonderful and brilliant, and we're getting married. And I miss that child-like imagination and wonder that she used to have, and so I feel like... I'm going to dig around this year and see if there's anything left in there. So I would like to do more nature walks, more exploring with nature. And I was thinking, okay, I like the good and the beautiful science. So like with that, we are, we're doing the bird unit first. I have never started this, so this will be brand new. I've got my binder all prepped and ready to go. There's a lot in here because I feel like this is the thickest my binder has ever been with prepped stuff. And then the one cool thing about the bird one is that it does have, I think when I bought it, it came with this bird watching nature notebook for free. So I actually got this for free from the good and the beautiful, but I think you can purchase it. I'm hoping that it somehow is incorporated in their lesson or if it's just like when you go out on a nature walk, you can think about these things and talk about these things based on what you learn. So I'm not really sure how this is incorporated, but I did buy a nice pair of binoculars so that we can learn to do some bird watching. So this is like a normal notebook day. There's lots of these blank notebooks. So I guess when you go out, you're doing some bird watching, whatever you spot, you. You say name of the bird, the location, the date, what did it look like, um, behavior, some notes about it, size, feather color, bill color, you know, what did the bird look like so that you can identify it. I had this downloaded and I did not buy it, so I don't know if this is a free download or if I just got it for free because like I said, I bought all this last year, so I'm not sure. If you are printing from the good and the beautiful, heed my warning now. I have Mac computers. You can't just open the file and send it to the printer. It does not work well. You have to print it as an image. So I had to print this twice. When I printed it, for example, this page with these birds on it, you can see these birds are necessary. It's pointing out things about the birds. The birds did not print. <laughs> so it was just like words, like pointing to nothing. You have to print this in, as an image. And they say, like, if you don't have a PDF writer, I will tell you what I did. I copied and pasted it all and threw it in a Word document and then I printed it from there. 
if you're like this was a teeny tiny book that I was able to do that but you have to print this as an image or you're gonna miss out on a lot of stuff but I thought this nature journal for bird watching was really really cool I've never done bird watching before so <laughs> What is that thing? It's this knife. Uh. But one of the other ideas that I had, and I'm like saying ideas because I don't know if this is gonna work on a daily basis or not. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna fit this in. I didn't buy Exploring Nature with Children. I have seen no YouTube videos on this one. This is Exploring Nature around the year, 365 days of journaling. So this is just one season. I did not print out the entire book. I bought this on Teachers Pay Teachers. I want to say it was 11 or $12 for the whole thing. It was a digital download. It's pretty simple on the inside. It's just black and white pages, but they're like journaling prompts. So give you ideas for what you can do when you go out. So for example, this says November 9th. Obviously in November, the journaling prompts are going to be for fall. Like it's not going to tell you to be looking for budding flowers in November. So for November 9th, it says observing the moon, day nine. So obviously on, we've been observing the moon now for nine days. You should by now have a strong rhythm of observation for your nightly sky watching time. Begin by looking at the night sky. Notice any planets, constellations, aeroplanes. Notice the weather conditions, cloud cover, rain, fog. Notice sounds, smells, etc. Notice any animal activity. Make your regular thumbnail sketch to show the shape of the illuminated moon, adding the date and time of your observation, as well as the moon's location in the sky. Make note of your observations in nature journal and add your questions. Be sure to allow plenty of time during the day to investigate your questions. So that's just one example of a daily journaling activity. So it looks like on other days, it suggests you could go to the planetarium, you could get a telescope, binoculars, let's see, October, has autumn leaves, collects some beautiful autumn leaves today. Who inhabits your trees? So you're gonna be observing critters in your trees. Autumn poetry, so there's some poetry in here. Choose a poem that speaks to you of autumn. Copy into your journal, either into its entirety or, or just a portion of it. If we're able to do some poetry tea time this year, maybe I'll incorporate this nature stuff into like our afternoon of poetry tea time. So I don't know. But this was something that I thought could be used year after year after year. So even if I don't get it to it this year, it might be something fun to do later. I only printed autumn and then I have a note in my planner to decide if I want to print winter and spring and summer. But I didn't want to waste a bunch of paper if I wasn't truly able to incorporate it. I did pay to have it spiral bound at Office Depot. For me, it cost less than $5 to just take it there to do. I think if I print out future seasons, I will probably just use those Happy Planner discs. I have a Happy Planner punch and I have a bunch of discs that I could just reuse for that. That way, because I like the idea of not ha having, like if I go to a, a state park or a local park or something, I don't want to be carrying a binder. It's not as flexible, yes. You guys, I just now noticed this little stinking mic. I just noticed it on the floor. Somehow it came unclipped from my shirt and was sitting on the floor. So I'm sorry for the echoiness of the last few segments, but if you watched this video, Life of a YouTuber, you will feel my pain and you will understand when I tell you I am not re-recording all of the things again. <laughs> So I'm sorry and thank you for bearing with me. I think I will re-record one segment because it was pretty short what I just said. I will re-record that. So one other thing that I'm adding into the sciencey part is a book study through learning with literature. If you watched my 10th grade curriculum picks, you saw that my son was doing The Call of the Wild through a free learning through literature book study. Well, they also had a free book study for younger kids. So I went ahead and signed up for that and it is cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Okay, so for just so, for those of you who may not know, the Learning Through Literature website is created by the blogger hidethechocolate.com. She is kind of like into the brave writer lifestyle. I'm trying to figure out what is this lifestyle? How do I incorporate it into my life? I was just, I kind of stumbled across all of this this summer as I was researching that. 
But this particular book study, because it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs about weather, it had a lot of sciencey weather type experiments. So I thought that sounds like a science unit. So it's kind of dabbling in literature with a sprinkle of science in there. So we're just gonna consider it kind of one of our science units that'll be fun to try out. Um, she does have subscriptions. So if you, if you try out like her free literature study and you like it, she has other books and stuff like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is art because since we're not doing a co-op this year, I actually planned my co-op's art last year and it wasn't as hard as I thought that it would be. So I thought I can do the same thing and recreate that at home. So I did make an art plan. I have two art books here, Making Amazing Art. And this, I don't feel like this had a grade. Actually, it did have a grade level on it. This one I think was through junior high. There was a lot of really cool, interesting things. And I will link this below, because this is definitely on Amazon, and so is Teach Art to Children. It was also on Amazon. So lots of fundamentals of art. So if you want to organize your art projects by line, shape, colors, that's usually how these books are organized. So what I did was I went through and I picked out the ones that I thought my daughters would enjoy but also I didn't want them to be too super complicated for me to be able to teach so I kind of just went through my art books and used some flags and flagged what I thought we might do I created a spreadsheet because that's what I like to do I like to plan in spreadsheets and then after that I went through my books again and I determined okay what's kind of the category here of the art project is there a logical order that I want to do how many art projects do I want to plan? This is still kind of up in the air. Cause so this book, Teaching Art to Children, you could just start from the beginning and go bit by bit. This says through sixth grade, yes. Grades one through six. And it teaches all of these elements, line, shape, color, value, texture, form, and space. I wanted to make sure I got at least one art project out of each category. There's so many cool things you could do with art. I'm just gonna be really, here's a cool one for texture. I'm just trying to be really intentional this year with setting aside time for my daughters for this and maybe even my son. So how am I gonna incorporate my son into this? Since we're not joining a co-op, I decided we're gonna use every other Tuesday, which would have been our normal co-op day, and that's gonna be kind of our family co-op. It's gonna be our family fun day. So my son is not gonna have, he's gonna be with us. He's not going to be doing like his individual high school work. That's our family co-op day and we're gonna be learning together. So we might do some nature walks. He doesn't have his own journal, but that doesn't mean he can't just journal a notebook. We might do some nature walks together. We might dabble in some art projects together. And we are also gonna be doing this course from Compass Classroom on film making. Ah! I'm so excited, honestly, about this filmmaking course. It's gonna teach you the elements of like making a movie. It's gonna teach you good camera shots to get different camera shots, studying some film in order to study these elements that it's gonna be teaching us. And it looks like this course might only have 14 lessons. So I thought, wow, one lesson for every co-op day. We're gonna go through all this together and my children are gonna get to dabble in filmmaking with camera. Mama's gonna learn some things. Tell me if you, got, if any of you have children who you ask them what they wanna be when they grow up and they go, you know, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. <laughs> That's my kids right now. So I'm like, well, if you wanna be a YouTuber, you better learn how to make some film. I have a niece who's going to school for this sort of thing. I also have a nephew who has a business doing filmmaking for social media. So this is a, an emerging market, really, of opportunity and skills to learn. This might be the wave of the future. So I'm excited to dabble in this with my kids on our family co-op day through Compass Classroom. And I am an affiliate with Compass Classroom, and so if you wanna check them out, I will leave a link down below, and I appreciate it so much when you guys use my link. It lets Compass Classroom know when you're visiting their website that Rachel sent you there. And so, thank you very much. But I also, I gotta figure out how to incorporate the poetry tea time. I really wanna do that here and there. That might be on a Tuesday afternoon. 
I do intend on hosting some book parties or doing some of the things that the Brave Writer suggests, and that would include my entire family. That's how you incorporate a high schooler all the way down to third grader. If you want to look more into the Faithopedia, check out this video. For other family curriculums that we've done in the past, check out this video right here, and I will see you soon with all the homeschool planning videos. Really, yes. Did you get some likes? Did you get some likes?